29 AD, the ancient Roman Empire was devastated. The eruption of the great Mount Vesuvius is the most well-known natural disaster of the ancient world. Because of this phenomenal disaster we are able to piece together perfectly what life in ancient cities such as Pompeii and Herculaneum was like due to the excellent preservation of the cities covered in ash and volcanic rock. Thanks to ancient historians, such as Pliny the Elder and his nephew Pliny the Younger, we have an abundance of information taking us directly into the minds of those who were there. Pliny the Younger writes to a historian named Tacitus who has requested eyewitness information and info about his uncle's death. Tacitus, you asked me to write you something about the death of my uncle so that the account you transmit to posterity is as reliable as possible. I am grateful to you, for I see that his death will be remembered forever if you treat it. He perished in the devastation of the loveliest of lands, in a memorable disaster shared by peoples and cities, but this will be a kind of eternal life for him. Although he wrote a great number of enduring works himself, the imperishable nature of your writings will add a great deal to his survival. The cloud was rising from a mountain at such a distance we could not tell which, but afterwards learned that it was Vesuvius. I can best describe its shape by likening it to a pine tree. It rose into the sky on a very long trunk, from which spread some branches. Was he afraid? It seems not, as he kept up the continuous observation of the various movements and shapes of that evil cloud, dictating what he saw. Ash was falling onto the ships now, darker and denser the closer they went. Now it was bits of pumice, and rocks that were blackened and burned and shat. The sight of it made the scientist in my uncle determined to see it from closer at hand. He ordered a boat made ready. He offered me the opportunity of going along, but I preferred to study he himself happened to have set me a writing exercise. Meanwhile, broad sheets of flame were lighting up many parts of Vesuvius, their light and brightness were the more vivid for the darkness of the night. To alleviate people's fears, my uncle claimed that the flames came from the deserted homes of farmers who had left him a panic with the hearth fires. Then he rested, and gave every indication of actually sleeping. People who passed by his door heard his snores, which were rather resonant since he was a heavy man. The ground outside his room rose so high with the mixture of ash and stones. Then came a smell of sulfur, announcing the flames, and the flames themselves, sending others into flight but reviving him. As I understand it, his breathing was obstructed by the dust laden there, and his innards, which were never strong and often blocked or upset, simply shut down. When daylight came again two days after he died, his body was found untouched, unharmed, in the clothing that he had had on. He looked more asleep than dead. I will say one more thing, namely, that I have written out everything that I did at the time, and heard while memories were still fresh. You will use the important bits, for it is one thing to write a letter, another to write history, one thing to write to a friend. Farewell. Prior to the eruption, Pompeii was a thriving city. It was colonized due to the surrounding fertile volcanic soil which made the growing of crops easier. Its economy depended on trade from the nearby ports and the people there came from all walks of life. Because of such a diverse population and the natural views regarding sexual intercourse, brothels were a common part of society. Brothels were the place where citizens could come to pay for whichever intercourse they wished to participate in by simply pointing to a picture portraying a sexual deed. Due to the language barrier, since Pompeii was a port town with a diverse population, by pointing, the prostitutes were able to understand the desires of the customers. Throughout Pompeii there are many other sexual suggestions, such as penis-shaped signs all pointing to the brothels. Sexual indulgences were expressed and not to be ashamed of as they are in our culture, and speaking about sex was just as common then as talking about the weather or sports. Although the Pompeian view of sex isn't quite the same as ours today, they have contributed to many other aspects of our society. The Romans are also credited with the first effective underground plumbing system with the usage as pipes for draining and adding water into their famous baths, as found in Pompeii. 
we have also found the remnants what we would consider ancient fast food places. They were a kind of buffet-style restaurant and were found on street corners and distinguished by their grease stains. On August the 24th, 79 Anna Domini, the people of Pompeii, Herculaneum, and other nearby Roman cities experienced a series of earthquakes, raining of stones, and the formation of a giant black cloud over Mount Vesuvius all leading out to the eruption lasting 25 hours. Olive oil? Thank you. When tiny, bring me some wine. <laughs> Zeus likes you. inspired by the works of Livy, the famous Roman historian, who is credited for the records kept during the Roman Empire's seize of power. Pliony the Elder tried to remain calm during the unusual and terrifying events that took place that day. He was immensely interested in the natural world and felt no need to panic over nature's phenomena. Instead of evacuating, he took a bath. Pliony, Pliony! We have to evacuate now! No, no. But how do we know so much about the ancient cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum? Because the eruption encased the city in 23 feet of ash, it has preserved the ruins. The volcano's pyroclastic flow made of hot ash, pumice, rock fragments, and volcanic gas were so hot that they didn't burn wood, but actually carbonized it, making it petrified. Because of this, much of the timber has survived in a charred condition. The wood wasn't the only thing charred. During excavation in the 20th century, in the city of Herculaneum, which was also affected by Mount Vesuvius eruption, the villa of the papyri was discovered. It is an extensive library containing charred scrolls fused into solid lamps. Recent research has used carefully measured out chemicals to enable more than 1800 scrolls to be opened and separated into separate sheets which have revealed dates and other insight to the Roman life. But not only in Herculaneum was a library found but many other public monuments such as a palestra, where sporting events happened and a large portico surrounding a vast central piscina or swimming pool as well as many the maze, or baths. In 1595 Pompeii was rediscovered when an aquifer was being built in the area. Excavation began in 1748 and was led by Carlo di Bobone. Since then, digging has been sporadic. The first features to be exposed were the necropolis, temple of Isis, and theatre quarter. During the French occupation of Naples from 1806 to 1815 there was much activity on the site, then things slowed down again until around 1924 when a medio mayor began an intense restoration through 1961. In recent years excavation work has been scaled down to concentrate the limited resources on restoring and maintaining the buildings that have already been exposed. The more we excavate, the closer we become with the culture and history of this ancient city. Thanks to Pliny, the scrolls, and careful excavation, we have incredibly detailed information. We know around 20,000 residents were buried in about 23 feet of ash. 
rain mixed with this ash forming a sort of concrete, perfectly preserving the cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum and their residents at the moment of their death. As the ash hardened around the bodies it formed a sort of shell. As the body decomposed, the shell remained. As the bodies were excavated the cast shells were filled with plaster to further preserve and prevent breakage. Some of these casts we know a great deal about based on belongings, clothing, bounds, areas of the cities, and more. One of the most famous artifacts is a gold bracelet with the words slave girl engraved on it. Thank you.